PSA nerve block is a block that I totally avoided when I started practicing dentistry. I was so scared of this block, I thought I was going to cause a massive hematoma, and I just didn't know how to do it because I hadn't had much experience with it. So I stuck with what I knew. I did what was safe, and it was just the infiltrations over these molars. The downside to it was that I wasn't getting maybe the best anesthesia for my patients that I could have been getting, and I was oftentimes doing a couple injections versus just a single block to begin with. So the PSA is a terrific block. It has become one of my favorite blocks now that I've learned the proper way to do it. We're going to go over that technique right away with you, and what we're going to start with is showing you how to find your insertion point. So your insertion point is usually over the second molar, and it is right distal to where the zygoma kind of drops in. So you're going to push in the height of the vestibule with a cotton swab, start moving distally, pushing superiorly, and you're going to feel this little concavity. That is where you're going to be inserting your needle. Now, in order to access this position, it can be difficult in some patients with the way that their jaw is shaped. You are going to have them shift their jaw to the side that you're injecting on. Now, this is quite extreme, but gives you an idea. What it does is it moves the ramus and the coronoid out of the way, and you can now get way better access to this area. So you've applied your topical, you've located your position for insertion. We are now going to look at inserting our 27 gauge short needle. Now what I will often do, and you can maybe see it here, is I bend that needle. So I bend it a little bit so that I can get a little bit more medial in this injection. So if we look at this, it just helps you so you don't have to swing out quite as much. You can come in on a little bit shallower angle. Now the angle of insertion is, as we've maybe known from before, the 45 degrees. So it's 45, 45, 45, meaning 45 degrees superiorly, 45 degrees posteriorly, and 45 degrees medially. The reason for this, if you can get a good look at the anatomy back here, is because the tuberosity kind of curls around. You're trying to mirror that bone or follow that bone. The depth of your insertion is going to be about 16 millimeters. You will have no bony contact at this point. If you do, what's happening is you're inserting too medially, you're bumping into the tuberosity. So what you want to do is withdraw fully, reorient, and then insert again to your 16 millimeters. You need to aspirate twice in, two, in different planes. So once in one plane, once in another plane. If you have two negative aspirations, you can deposit 0.9 to 1.8 mils of anesthetic into this region. You can put quite a bit of anesthetic back here because this space will um, accommodate a lot of anesthetic. 0.9 to 1.8 is typically all you need. I'll usually do a full carp when I'm doing an extraction back here. The reasons why you might get a hematoma back here is that you might be over inserting the needle. So pay attention to how deep you're going. Don't go beyond that 16 millimeters. If you are hitting bone or maybe you're feel like you're too lateral once you get in there, do not reorient your needle without fully withdrawing. If you do, you have a high chance again for a hematoma. This